Well, right here I have an automatic transfer switch that has gone bad and needs to be replaced. Now, how do I know that it's gone bad and needs to be swapped out? And what does an automatic transfer switch even do? <laughs> Finally, how do you even know that your RV has an automatic transfer switch? Well, let's jump right in and I'll show you. Now, unless you're off-grid and boondocking, your primary source of electrical power is going to be from your shore power cable. And that's going to power your air conditioners, maybe you have an electric fridge or your microwave, um, all those things that, uh, that you want to be able to use in your RV. So that's our primary source. Now, if uh, you have a motorhome or a large fifth wheel or you know some larger travel trailers, you may also have an onboard generator like this. Now that's a secondary source of AC power. And you know when you fire that up, you need to have some way to tell the RV to use this source of power versus the shore power cable even if your shore power cable is not plugged in now for some older rvs that was a, a manual cable that you would actually plug into the generator and you wouldn't be able to plug in the the cord to the pedestal and plug in the generator at the same time so so that was kind of a manual operation to say hey i want to be powered from the generator or i want to be powered from the pedestal. So uh, most RVs now that have an onboard generator do this automatically and that's where the automatic transfer switch comes in. It takes two inputs, one from the shore power cable and the other one from your generator. It detects when there's power on the generator for example and it will switch to that power source. Now, if the generator's not running, it'll uh, try to use what's on your shore power cable. Now, most transfer switches are gonna be set up so that the generator has priority. For example, if you're plugged into a pedestal at a campground and you have power and you fire up your generator, it's gonna take precedence. So it's gonna say, oh, hey, I got power coming in on the generator, I'm gonna switch to generator power. Now when the generator shuts down, it's going to automatically switch back to your power source from your shore power. So that's typically how most uh, automatic transfer switches are going to work. There's two inputs coming in and there's one power output that's going to go to your load center, your uh, your switch panel that uh, you know is in your RV somewhere that's got all your circuit breakers on it. So if and when your automatic transfer switch goes bad, then the result is that you're not going to have any AC power in your RV. Yeah, still no power. So if you have an issue where there's no power coming into your RV, you know, first thing to do is to check the circuit breakers and and switches and other things that might have tripped or be switched off that might be preventing that even your generator has two one or two circuit breakers on it that could be off so check those and then you know the the issue could be your automatic transfer switch so let's take a closer look at my transfer switch and uh, i'll show you how it's configured and then we'll uh, do some testing to verify that uh, there's something wrong with it and it's not generating power now an automatic transfer switch like this one is, as the name implies, it's a giant switch. And it's got some electronics in there that are going to detect whether there's power coming in to one of the two inputs. Now my transfer switch here is pretty basic. It essentially just switches between these two input lines. This is my generator input here, which is wired to this spot. And this is my shore power input that's wired to this spot. And then it switches between these two and the output goes out here to the main switch panel or you know where all the circuit breakers are inside the RV to power the rig. Now this is for a 50 amp uh, service RV so there's 
uh, two lines on each power connection. We call them two legs, so we have two hot lines and then a neutral, and then each one also has a ground that's grounded in here. So four total for each one. Now if you have a 30 amp transfer switch, it's only gonna have three uh, for each uh, power connection. It's gonna be a hot, a neutral, and a ground. In this case, I have two hots, a neutral, and a ground. Now let's run a little test, and I'm gonna fire up the generator and measure the uh, power input coming from the generator and see if there's power moving through the transfer switch. All right. We got the generator running and I have my multimeter set to AC power. Hope you can read that. The negative's gonna go on the neutral and the positive, we'll just put it on one of these lines. And yeah, so I got a 119, almost 120 volts AC at uh, 61 hertz. So that's just right. So I checked the other one. Should have two circuits with that amount. So I'm good to go coming in from the generator. Now if we check the output, let's just check one of these lines here. Put the negative on the neutral. It shows that I'm actually getting power going out, which is surprising. It seems to be working right now on the generator mode. All right. Yeah, so I do actually have generator power right now, which is which is good. So yeah. All right. So I was actually surprised that. Uh, that it worked this time for the generator because sometimes it doesn't work. Now let's uh, test the shore power, which I think is where the primary issue is. Yeah. It's behaving kind of strange. So what's, um, what's happening here is that uh, there's something going on inside the transfer switch uh, on the shore power connection. So this is what it's been doing is uh, basically tripping a breaker just a few seconds after I connect it to the transfer switch. There it goes. See it just switched off. So it disconnected power from inside here. There's no power going out, there's power going in, and I've double checked the power coming from my pedestal to be good and yeah, it works for everything else. It's just when I plug it into the transfer switch, it, uh, it causes it to uh, disconnect. So I have a replacement unit here. It's laid out exactly the same, which is nice because I don't have to do anything different with the cabling. Uh, so it should be a straight swap out. And I just need to punch out some of these holes here for the three, two lines going in, one going out. And yeah, we'll swap it over get this one wired up and then uh, we'll test it again. All right, about ready to put the new transfer switch in. A couple things I wanted to point out is that uh, I'm using a, um, a square bit on this because these screws and a lot of electrical stuff has this square bit on the inside. So it's not really a Phillips head. You know, using something like this, you're probably gonna strip it out. So either use a flathead screwdriver where you can really get a good torque on it or a square bit like this, which fits right in the middle, and you'll really be able to tighten down that screw pretty well. And then we're gonna go ahead and torque these afterwards once we uh, test it and make sure everything's good. And it's got the torque specs right here, 25 to 35 inch pounds. Another thing I'm gonna do is uh, put in some of this Nolox uh, in, I'm just gonna squirt a little bit in each one of these terminals, and that's just gonna give me some added protection against corrosion and give me a better 
connection long term. All right, the new uh, transfer switch is in and I've got uh, shore power connected and seems to be uh, powered up inside the RV. So let's uh, take some more voltage readings and then we'll fire up the generator and just double check things. All right, we got our meter on AC voltage and we'll put the negative on the neutral here on the shore power cable. and the red lead on L1, which is the first leg, and we've got yeah, 120-ish volts AC at 59.99 hertz, so that's uh, 60 hertz basically. And check the other leg, 122 and 60 hertz, so good to go there. And then the output, so this is the key one here. Let's check the same. We've got Okay, 119.7. And then on the other leg, 122. So we must have, uh, this one's got a load on it right now. It's probably charging up the uh, battery bank. So it's got a little bit more of a load on it. So good to go. And the generator, we shouldn't have anything coming in there. We can double check that in the generator. Yeah, zero volts on the generator on both sides. Okay, so let's fire up the generator. It should switch over to generator. A little light should come on. All right, well that should do it. I hope you found this helpful and uh, leave me a comment, let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.